Welcome back to The Truth with Trinity, and I am your host, Trinity, and if this is your first time tuning into the podcast, I'd like to send you a warm welcome. Here I talk about issues that happen within the Black community, hopefully for some resolution or at least some food for thought to go about your daily way. So without further ado, I'd like to talk about this episode's topic, which is the Black man is needed in the labor room during delivery. So I wanted to start off by saying that in the USA, the black maternal mortality rate is 2.5 times higher than white women, while the national rate is 17.4 deaths per 100,000 births in 2018, 37.1 black women died per 100,000 births. Now that was three years ago. So, of course, by now it's increased. And I wanted to start off with a bit of history. Our people, you know, Black people, uh, and furthermore, Black women, have a long legacy of delivering babies under extreme pressure and circumstances, such as, you know, our men being sold off during the slavery era, our men being murdered, and even now. Our men being incarcerated or our men not continuing a relationship or vice versa. Uh, a woman not being in a relationship with a man. And it can be quite easy to not attend the birth of your child because the woman didn't allow you to attend. So this could be like animosity or some type of retaliation. You know, the woman not letting you attend the birth of your child or you and the woman were never in a relationship. So this stems from what we like to call friends with benefits where there's no commitment, there's no ties and a baby is formed from unplanned pregnancy and unprotected sex. The list could go on as to the reason of your absence. Now, Times where it's uh, excusable for a man not to be at their child's birth is like times of deployment when they're in the armed services, et cetera, et cetera. So that's a, a realistic exception. But I want to talk about the effects of women giving birth at the bedside without a husband. So you notice I didn't say baby daddy. I said husband, but even if both of you all are not in a relationship, at least your presence is better than not being there, period. I say a husband because also it's easier for a man to be more careless to a woman who is not his woman or is not his own. So. For instance, if any ladies are listening, you know, if a man's dealing with you and you guys are just friends with benefits, basically there's no commitment, there's no ties, you know, it's just a sexual, physical relationship. It's easy for him to dismiss those calls. It's easy for him to make an excuse or not put you on priority, not drop what he's doing because this is the biggest moment of his life. Because you're not in a committed relationship and most certainly not his wife. And that as women, that's what we need more of. We need more commitment from men and we need to stop giving ourselves so easily, easily physically without thinking about the long term. And that's what us as black people must do. We must stop being so impulsive to do stuff so rash and quick, not realizing the effects that it will have not only on ourselves in the future, but also future children. And in the society we live in and in hospitals, we may think these things don't matter about being married or single. It doesn't matter, you know, having children by, you know, someone that you're just a friend with. But a male presence for the mother does 
and can influence the care that is given. Okay, so that's like when you're in a hospital, you know, you're giving birth, nurses and doctors, you know, this is just the American society we live in and it's and it's proper, but they are more attentive and give more respect to a woman that has her man at bedside and preferably uh, you with his last name. So why does the black woman need a husband instead of a baby daddy? Okay. Women are in delicate condition while pregnant. And that's an old school term, especially used by European aristocrats of wealth, but delicate condition. So all that fast movement and, you know, things that you would do getting on a roller coaster, you know, things um, that you would do, you know, you have to kind of slow down and, and, and be stable uh, to be able to develop a child. Okay. And things like working increased hours can put stress on the fetus and the woman's body leading to premature birth and sometimes birth defects. Okay, so it's one thing for a woman to pitch in in the house or if you both have decided that, hey, you want to continue to work, you want to continue your career and, you know, your husband is also working. But a lot of times what's going on in the black community is because there's no commitment. So that's not every black person. But I think we all know the still uh, the situations of what I'm talking about. Um, you know, a lot of times the guy is like, I don't care what happens. You know, you can keep the baby or get an abortion or whatever you want to do. But that's not my responsibility. And a lot of times, you know, especially as women... That's why I say we have to be careful with the decisions and the selection, um, you know, that we make because then we're stuck working 50 hours, you know, 60 hours per week and you think that you're fine. And, you know, that's one thing to do that when you, you know, you don't have a child um, and you're not developing a child, but it causes a lot of stress um, on, on you and your body and the child as well. And I really believe it is an increased risk for C-sections as well. Um, another thing that can happen is it increases a woman's need to engage in alcohol and drug substance, um, while pregnant to help cope with the stress, what stress, the stresses of, you know, realizing, you know, that you don't have a, a male's comfort, you know, um, you're not being his priority, you know, the things that, and the fun that you used to engage in, uh, you know, when you didn't have a child or um, when you were being able to be free, now you're realizing that you're stuck in this um, on your own. Um, and then, you know, some guys will say that, well, I never said I wouldn't be a father to the child. I, I, I'm just not going to be with the mother. Well, this is a message to the black man. It's not good enough. If it's not good enough for other races of women, it's not good enough for the black woman. It's not good enough for the black children to sit and continue to have men that are going to be irresponsible and to have unprotected sex with the black woman and continue to say, that's not my problem. That's part of the reason why we have such a high poverty rate and we have this war against each other um, as a people. So we need more black men that are not trying to physically have sex with women because she's just that pretty, because you cannot control your sexual indulgences, but you need to be looking at a woman, especially a particular woman, to be your wife and to have your children with and to pass on um, anything that you have developed on this earth. When you pass away, you have that to um, pass on to your legitimate children and it provides security, not only for yourself in your pocketbook, but also the woman and the children that you have with her. Okay. Um, the unborn child can develop a sense of not belonging vicariously through the mother's emotions. And a lot of times, you know, uh, a lot of us haven't been taught this and especially scientific, you know, when the mother's hurt, when the mother's in pain, um, you know, the child can sense everything. So not only is the child getting its nutrients, 
um, and blood supply from the mother, but anything that she's feeling, it's being transmitted and channel channeled through the mother. So, you know, if she's feeling a sense of, oh, wow, you know, I just had a, a friends with benefits relationship and I decided to keep the baby, but he doesn't want anything to do with it. The baby's going to feel that if it's a situation where ladies, you know, you slept with a married man, of course, he really doesn't want anything to do with it. You know, um, the child's going to feel that. So as w black women and black men, we really got to watch our, our decisions. Um, another thing that can happen is because of those emotions being transferred to the child, it can cause stress during delivery. For an example, the mother may need a C-section or she may um, hemorrhage, you know, which is excessive, excessive bleeding and blood clots. Um, and sometimes that can't be stopped um, and, you know, can lead to maternal death along with, of course, like I said, the stresses of working and, and things of that nature. Um, the black woman during labor is in a state of delirium. So this is a, in a state where uh, not so much she's out of her mind, but it's hard for her to think, you know, and I know as guys, it's hard because you're like, I've never given birth, never will give birth. But that's where it's time for you to have compassion and empathy. Um, and that takes you to have empathy for a woman that you love and that you care about, not just someone that you think is attractive, but someone that you would risk your life for. And that's why it's so important that, like I said, as us as black people, we really start putting some thought, some kingdom decisions behind what we're doing. Uh, we say we want leadership. We say we want um, a new kingdom. We say we want to be in charge, you know, but how are we going to show that if we can't make sound decisions that's going to better our people? You know, it's one thing for us to look for others to give us justice, but we have to, you know, be willing to to make changes that's going to be better um, in the long run for our, our people uh, personally. So I want to get back on um, this point. So like I said, once again, the black woman is, you know, in delirium, a state of delirium due to the pain. She needs an advocate, you know, so this is a person that speaks on the behalf of another. So someone's rights. Okay. Her mother or her friend is great. So it's great if the child's mother's friends are there, girlfriends, aunties, mothers, but none is better than her husband. You know, like I said, once again, it's great that, you know, Aunt Susie is there, but the male's presence is very strong. She needs a man who will present. She needs a man who will present, uh, who will question the doctors and nurses on medication and procedures. So basically, when the doctor is delivering medication, when the nurses are implementing and administering medication, the black woman needs a man that says, hey, what are you giving her? What is this? What side effects is it going to cause? Are you doing your job correctly when you're delivering my son or daughter? These things are very important. And it's important for black women to know that we can be superwoman all day long, you know, and the strong black woman is just well overplayed. Yes, you do need a husband there. Yes, you do. You do. I mean, yeah, it can be done uh, without without a man there, but it's just so much better having someone by your side that cares just as much as you do, um, especially the person that helped you create the child. So lastly, your presence and strength as a man is greatly needed in the black woman's fight to deliver the child because your presence in the delivery room reminds the black woman and is a source of comfort for the black woman. It also encourages her to keep fighting because it's a fight to bring the child. The mother and the child has to fight together to bring this child into existence. It also reminds her during delivery of what the fight was all about. So just your presence being there reminds her 
of the reason why she's in this fight of her life to give birth, just you being there. And I wanted to mention a couple of other reasons about maternal um, mortality. You know, a lot of our young sisters are giving birth before they hit full puberty and the damages that that does on the body. Yes, they deliver some of them, but some of them, it's not being mentioned to our young sisters that's 16 and 15 and 14 years old about the increased death and risk that it takes and the damages it does to your body to give birth at such a young age. You know, we need to pass this on. And, you know, there will be devil advocates out there to say, well, you can't stop everybody. You can't stop um, a young person from doing what they're going to do. But you know what we can do, though? We can decrease the risk of it happening. You know, it's too many of our people that will say, oh, your mother and father could be lawyers and doctors and a child still have a teenage pregnancy, which is true. You know, you can't control, you can only control your child, especially when they get to a certain age, to a certain degree. But we as a people need to stop using that as an excuse because we have this lackadaisical um, reality of excuse and um not uh, taking control uh, of our destinies, we're willing to pass this on to our children. Yeah, those incidences can happen, but we can decrease them happening in our demographic, in our communities by strictly enforcing the consequences um, of certain actions. And I also want to say, um, I, I want to encourage the brothers to denounce the saying of I don't care about my child's mother and only the child. You know, I don't know how many times I've heard that before. And I'm sure you've heard that out there before too. Um, you know, you'll hear a guy say, uh, not all guys, but you'll hear some guys say, I could care less about what my child's mother is doing. I only care about my child. It's like, there's so many of us that think that way. You'll even hear women saying it out of hurt. And what what sense? So as black people, we got to start making sense. Okay, we got to start making sense. What sense does that make for you to have a child with a person that you don't care about? I mean, I just that's a rhetorical question. So that question doesn't require a, a, a response vocally. Just think inside of your own mind. What sense does that make to have children by someone that you don't care about? Okay. That's one thing we need to correct. And to keep going, um, so that's that's just something to think about. That, Like I said, that quote is almost like an oxymoron. I'm going to move on. When the fact is the child is raised in a better environment when the father and mother are in love with each other and not just a booty call from some one that you have no respect for because that's what comes with it. You know, when you're having these friends with benefits relationships, you know, it's not spoken about the detrimental uh, consequences that come along with it. A lot of that comes from, a lot of that stems and it, and it trickles down to not having respect for that person. You don't know them. You know them sexually, physically, but you have no respect for them. So them having a child, um, it, a lot of times it doesn't make a difference. So, in retrospect, ladies, we must make better decisions in who we let plant seeds in us. So, that goes with women, too. He's cute. He has a nice car. Um, He makes a little money. None of that matters if you're sitting up there with his child and he doesn't care. He's not presenting you with the major components that's needed to successfully raise a child. You know, like I said, we've done it as black women before, but it is three times harder to raise a child without a husband, someone that cares. And it does psychological damage to us as women. You can play it off. You can laugh it off. You can sleep with another man, whatever you want to, you know, cover it up and do. But it's still, you know, there's still the uh, major part that um, we must really be cautious and we have a bigger responsibility Because a lot of times, you know, the baby comes from us. So we're left with the child. um, And um, the guy may not stick around. So that's why it's best to make sure before 
um, pregnancy occurs, um, that we're really getting to know the guys that we're dealing with. So the guy, so not plural, the guy, the guy that you're dealing with. And brothers, my dear, beloved black brothers, think longevity wise and how your decisions affect your community by you being the leaders, by you being men, okay? Not only are you affecting your life with things like unwanted child support, unwanted drama, you know, um, you know, trying to move on with another woman and having another woman um, in the background telling you about your child that you may be trying to ignore or, you know, never agreed. It's best to make decisions before those things happen. Wise decisions as far as where you're planting your seed at. And that pretty much wraps up this segment. It's been a pleasure talking with you guys. Um, if you'd like to get in contact with me, you can at thetruthwithtrinity.com. You can also listen to my podcast on YouTube, Anchor, and Spotify. And always remember, if you can't tell the truth with anyone else, you can with Trinity. Till next time, take care.